<laughs> All right, we're with Garrett. He just won the locals at Gamer Dojo. You got a box? All right. What'd you play today? Uh, unfortunately, the most boring deck in the room by far. Uh, <laughs> We are practicing for our Indie Regional right. for next week, so we played Kashira. Uh, list is also exceptionally boring, just like the deck, but uh, sometimes that's good for a Regional. You get a lot of rounds, you want to be quick, and you don't want to have to think about a lot of options. So, uh, we'll just go through this. Uh, three Kashira Unicorn. Just three of basically all the good guys. Three Fenrir. Three rise hard. Hard to do it upside down. <laughs> uh, one ogre. I thought about going up on that, but we're still at one. Just testing it out. One scare cash. 100% needed. Always comes up. Uh, now, for the hand traps of the deck, we have a ton, which is the reason, basically, the main reason you want to be playing this deck for this format is that. The engine size is not particularly big, so you can load up on hand traps so you can stop Snake Eye before they go too far. Uh, funny enough, I didn't see a whole lot of Snake Eye today, but go figure. Uh, so we're on three Ghost Bell, three Valor, which might seem weird in a shifter deck, but uh, you just chain it, so that's fine. Uh, three Ghost Mourner, same card. Uh, speak of the Devil, three Shifter, three Ash. Four Correct. And then uh, three Imperm as well. How many hand traps is that? I believe that is 18 hand traps in the main pick. Uh, as far as spells, one terraforming because it is basically just Rota for the deck. Uh, and people aren't on draw as much, but still it is a known quantity. Uh, three birth, which is four heads, three theosis, three planet. No Prosperity, that's one of the big yeah. differences in this list. Uh, I think Prosperity is just too slow of a card for the format. You know, you draw it going second, and your opponent has anti-spell anyway, who cares? I'm also on like 18 hand traps, so what am I planning to draw into, really? Like a hand trap per turn? It's not particularly helpful. Um, and then one prep. Uh, just usually because if you can start your turn uh, with getting one of your guys banished, it helps you play through Nib a little bit, so you can summon back on your turn, or if you're just playing through your own shifter, you can just play as loose as hell as you want because you know you're going to be able to get what back or get something back no matter what happens. Um, the extra deck kind of explains a little more about what the play style of this deck is. So we're on two Shang. I see a lot of people cutting this down to like one or nothing, but against the right decks, zone locking is still correct. Like uh, Manadium, just making sure they can't play with more than a few monsters on the field is 100% correct over Heat Soul. Speaking of Heat Soul, that's how we get to it. Big O, you know, real nice explanation. Radio, this card is great. Um, you use it to steal out, uh, basically has a quick effect to detach and take a monster out of your opponent's graveyard, and then it becomes basically indestructible by battle card effects for the attribute of the monsters that it has under it. So you can usually take your opponent's Fire King stuff or Snake Eye stuff, which is probably the best removal for it because they have no way of getting it back unless they clear this, and you can't really clear it too easily except with like a Flame Burge or something, uh, which is super telegraphed. Uh, Dark Armed. Crazy card, flare metal time card, uh, sky crisis. This is how you play through nib when going second, basically. Just on your fifth summon, just slap it down and then go to battle phase and they can't nib you and you're good to go. Yeah. Zeus, duh. Uh, for heat soul, we play Link Spider with the Draco Sack token, IP Mascarena, and then this is a little different. I'm not on the G Golem stuff. I don't think it's good. It takes too much space in your extra deck. And uh, if you do see Shifter, that whole line is dead. So I don't like it. So we can actually just, because these are two Cyverse monsters, you can just go straight into Heat Soul off of them, all through Shifter, and still draw your two cards if you really need to. Um, and then SP, which you can make with the IP if you want to end on like that, or if you want to play through Nib. That is CR, by the way. Or if you do want to play through Nib. Or sometimes, honestly, um, it happened last week, I banished my own Shifter to Shifter my opponent again for two more turns. Um, How many QCRs are there? Uh, a few. <laughs> there's a few. There's a few in here. There's a few in here. Um, <laughs> and then I, that's 13 cards to the last two. Um, is this the spice? Baron, which is pretty normal, and I think every catch to your deck lets you play through a lot of interruption, and then it threatens as soon as you summon, normal summon any of your ghost curls. And then the real one is Changing. This card comes up so much, it helps you OTK. And then against some deck specifically, I played like Dino today. He slapped down UTC, and I was like, all right, cool, on res, Chang Yang. Because <laughs> he had Lost World on the field, and that would have done nothing with Baron. 
Uh, by chain gang, just non-target banish, couldn't OTK, and we just, you know, clear him on the next turn because this guy was like 6,000 attack or something. Um, side deck is a little interesting-ish. There's like a couple interesting cards. So, we're going second. We have Lava Golem top deck this today. Felt really good. Um, we play... Three Droll, it's not incredible, but there are still those like stupid just decks running around that you need to be able to Droll, uh, including this one, but I don't recommend citing Droll against Cash for this exact reason, Dimensional Fissure. People are also running Valor and Droll, so they're gonna side that in against you. You just activate Dimensional Fissure and you're gonna put like two hand cards. Plus if they mid you, you have prep to get your stuff back. So you can kind of play like an idiot if you want, which is good. Uh, Did that happen to them? Uh, getting nibbed? Or just playing like an idiot. Oh yeah. Oh my god. I only play like an idiot, uh, which is why I play this deck. Um, and then this is kind of weird. I am citing prosperity. Uh, I don't main deck it because once again I explained like it's just not good if you're playing this many hand traps. But um, there are some decks that your hand traps just do nothing against. So you want a card that's going to be just generically good. Um, those are usually going to be lower power decks or like stun decks or something like that. So you want to be able to draw the out, which is this is draw the out the card. <laughs> And then this is the weird one. Play three Phantasmae, which is like, it's the sin of like playing mute in this deck where it's like it gives you a monster. But the good thing is, is that it is a seven. So you can just summon along with Birth, make, like uh, Shang and then Theosis and like kind of continue your plays. But also, it can help you dig for Birth, it can help you dig for Rise Heart, and more importantly, it helps you dig for Shifter. <laughs> yes, that's what I thought you were using it for. Just yeah, that's the main all. thing is that you're just really just digging for Shifter. As soon as they go, as soon as your opponent summons Link Karibo, yeah, you just draw to you, grab Shifter, and then it's easy. <laughs> so that's it. So how'd you do today? Uh, I didn't drop a game, but you know. All right, well, what's the deck? Uh, Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Anyone you want to shout out? Uh, nope, all me. <laughs>